Hello everybody. Today it is my second lecture of the sixth module. Now in this lecture I want to discuss the force vibration of Euler Bernoulli beam. There are different kinds of beam model that I have told you earlier. Timoshenko beam model, shear beam model, release beam model and then the very primary model is Euler Bernoulli beam model. So, I will discuss the force vibration of the Euler Bernoulli beam. Okay. So, today I am going to deliver very important topic of dynamic analysis that is dynamic response of beam subjected to moving load. Such topic is very important from the research point of view as well as from the practical design of the bridge structure which is subjected to moving load even in a uh, other industrial structure where the, the crane load is moving then also you can use this uh, technique to analyze the response of the beam. Now in relation to dynamic response of a beam due to moving load I will also discuss the magnification of the static response due to dynamic effect of the load. So that is very important because the rigorous dynamic analysis can be avoided in design office and therefore a magnifying factor can be used to, uh, to um, uh, increase the static response of the bridge uh, to take into account of the dynamic response or dynamic behavior in a gross manner. Then I will discuss the important problem a beam with a moving support. Such kind of problem is important when a slender structure is subjected to ground motion, motion or any other type of motion imparted in the support. For example, a wing when the aircraft lands the vibration from fuselage is transferred at the wing root and therefore the wing vibrates. So that type of slender structure is often subjected to support movement and I will discuss how to uh, carry out the analysis for such kind of uh, system using our the known principle that uh, this mode superposition method. Okay. Now let us first take a beam subjected to moving load. You can see here a beam of course I have taken a simply supported beam but for any other type of beam this formulation is applicable. Now consider a single load that is moving from left to right and you can see that is the direction of the movement and similar procedure will be also applicable when it moves from right to left. So V is the velocity at which the load moves or load travels over the beam. Now here V is taken as a uniform velocity and if V is uh, not taken uniform, say for example P is accelerating, the moving load has a acceleration. So in that case the location of the moving load can be represented as say A1 plus A1t plus A2 t square ok. So this a0, a1, a2 are the coefficient that will match the description of the forward motion of the moving load. Moving load can be compared with a vehicle. Suppose a vehicle wheel is moving over the bridge. So in that case this coefficient for example for constant velocity for constant velocity we can take a0 is 0, a2 is 0 and therefore x is equal to a1t, a1 is the uniform velocity of the vehicle of the moving load. So it can be taken as v, is v into t but if there is acceleration, if the moving load is moving load is accelerating accelerating then we should take 
say a naught is 0 so then we will take a 1 t plus a 2 t square where a 2 represents the acceleration of the vehicle. So in that case you can see that nonlinear function of time may appear in the formulation but here we are con considering a constant velocity a constant speed of the moving load that is v okay so therefore position of the moving load at any time instant can be represented by x which is nothing but v into t where v is the forward velocity of the vehicle now in this differential equation of motion say ei del 4 y by del x4 plus c into del y by del t plus m del square y by del t square equal to fxt fxt is the distributed load over the beam now here you can see there is a, a constant moving load that is passing the beam from left to right and here the position of the load at any time instant is of interest so position of load at any time instant can be represented by direct delta function so direct delta x minus v t is associated with the load p represent the distributed load in this beam so that direct delta function is used so here delta I is the direct delta function direct delta function has some very significant property that is integration of some function say mode shape function and uh, this multiplied by direct delta function and it is integrated between any limit here we are taking the beam domain so 0 to L is nothing but phi into Vt so that results will utilize to find out this uh, generalized force in the next slide I will uh, tell the mode superposition technique so we will uh, take the displacement of the beam as a function of x and t at any time instant at any location and it is given by summation of i equal to 1 to infinity means summation terms may be 1 2 3 that you sum up infinite number of terms however in practical computation the infinite number of terms is not possible therefore we have to truncate the summation to a finite number of terms okay so here y x t is the summation of phi i x into eta i t where eta i t is the generalized coordinate so meaning of eta i t is generalized coordinate coordinate in the ith mode in ith mode and phi x i x is the mode shape function mode shape of ith mode this is applicable for any type of beam ok because we have taken a ilnar Bernoulli beam this may represent a cantilever or any other type of beam having different boundary condition c is the damping per unit length so c is taken proportional to the mass so that decoupling can be done with the uh, orthogonality condition now substitute this series series is this so this infinite series is substituted in the differential equation and multiply both sides by uh, phi j x because we are here it is phi i x so i will multiply both sides of the equation by another function phi j x that means if i substitute this say first let me show it if I substitute then it becomes E summation let us take summation and E i d4 phi i dx4 eta i plus c eta i I am not uh, writing any argument that it implies that all the function eta i and its derivative are function of time c then eta i dot that is a time derivative of eta i then uh, it is uh, phi i 
then plus m m you will get this uh, del phi again a d phi again and eta i double dot so this is f x t equal to f x t so multiply both sides by another mode shape function phi j x so as a result you will get the right hand side is also multiplied by this mode shape function phi j x then integrate integrate both sides with respect to x within the limit 0 to l then you will find by virtue of orthogonality property and the assumption of mass proportional damping we get a decoupled equation of motion that is eta i double dot t plus 2 xi i xi i is the model damping uh, damping ratio at the ith mode omega i is the natural frequency of the ith mode eta i dot t plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t so you are getting a second order differential equation just like a single degree freedom dam system now here q i t is the generalized force and generalized force uh, that we actually uh, found from the property of the direct delta function if i carry out this integration dx 0 to l and this phi x t we have uh, written p delta x minus v t phi j x dx integration 0 to l so that means its value will be coming phi j v t or at any mode it will be phi i v t so that is reflected here then uh, the due to orthogonality condition we have found that integral is uh, non zero terms and whereas m phi i x into phi j x become zero because of orthogonal function orthogonal property of the mode shape now here you can see this if i do not use the mass normalized mode shape then coefficient of mode shape is taken as one so therefore this integral is not equal to 1 this will result in some other value which is known as generalized mass so this integral is known as capital mi and it is called generalized mass So after writing this we now substitute this phi i v t that is substituted now take an example of simply supported beam. So in a simply supported beam it is easy to visualize the mode shape function because it is a simple trigonometrical function consisting of only sine terms. So therefore at any instant of time if uh, the load is here and the distance from the left hand end is x it is nothing but v t at time instant t if v is the uniform velocity of the load then we have this generalized uh, mass the right hand side is uh, your p then sin phi v t so sin i pi v t l because the mode shape was sin i pi x by l x is here vt okay this is what and then denominator was mi so mi this is the generalized mass for the simply supported beam at the ith mode that is your m phi i square dx this becomes this phi i you put sin i pi x by l and is square so after integration you will get ml by 2 so after substituting this your q i that is the generalized force at the ith mode becomes uh, this p 2 p ml sin i pi v t by l so we are getting this right hand side term as a generalized force now you can see 
the moving load when acting on the beam it imposes a frequency of excitation so the beam is excited due to moving load dynamically and frequency of excitation you can compare with this term that is nothing but at the ith mode you can see this the frequency is uh, omega i is the driving frequency of the moving load is i pi v by l so if i is equal to 1 that is the first mode in first mode driving frequency will be will be pi v by l okay like that in any other mode you can find out first mode is the fundamental mode which contributes most towards the displacement okay so after carrying out this uh, analysis substituting m i as m l by 2 now we get the decoupled equation of motion eta i double dot t plus 2 j i i omega i eta dot i t plus omega i square eta i t equal to 2 p m l sin omega i t this is the differential equation of the decoupled system that means we have decoupled the equation of motion in the generalized coordinate so now its solution can be taken from the known results that we have obtained when a single degree freedom is subjected to harmonic force so here it can be compared with a harmonic force of amplitude 2 p by m l and the frequency is omega i of course the frequency here is dependent on the velocity of the uh, moving load okay so here very important term that frequency ratio has to be incorporated and frequency ratio plays an important part in uh, in the response magnitude so si is defined as the frequency ratio at the ith mode equal to omega i is the driving frequency in the ith mode divided by omega i omega i is the first natural frequency or ith natural frequency here we are talking about the general uh, mode that is ith mode so at nth mode for example sn the frequency ratio will be phi n divided by omega n where phi n is the driving frequency at the nth mode it is given by n pi v by l and omega n is the beam natural frequency for simply supported beam omega n is equal to n square pi square root over e i by m l to the power 4 ok so if n is equal to 1 then omega 1 is the fundamental natural frequency and for first mode which is the most predominant mode for deflection analysis for first mode omega 1 can be written as pi square e i by m l to the power 4 and it is what is fundamental natural frequency fundamental natural frequency and it is unit is radian per second ok so now uh, let us write the solution because it is a damped system so solution will consist of uh, the homogeneous solution for the damped uh, uh, single degree freedom system plus particular integral now let us see the homogeneous part homogeneous part contains one decaying term that is obvious due to presence of damping and it is given by exponential minus j i i omega i t you note it here this is omega i the natural frequency of the undamped mode undamped system and j i i is the uh, this damping ratio at the ith mode t is the time multiplied by e i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t where a i b i are constants of integration and omega d i is the damped natural frequency at the ith mode and it is given by omega d i equal to omega i 
रुट ओवर वन माइनस जै आई स्कोर सो फर स्म डेम्पिंग ओमेगा डि आई इज एप्रक्सिमेटली इक्ुअल टू ओमेगा आई ओके सो देट इज ह्वाट इज होमोजिनियस सल्यूशन देट इज उल्ड होमोजिनियस सल्यूशन that contains the contribution of the natural modes the natural frequency and the initial condition then the steady state response because of this harmonic force can be written as as we know that earlier we have found out this particular integral for harmonically excited system as some uh, amplitude that is we have found it which depends on the frequency ratio and damping and also the system parameters then we have found that it contains the frequency same as the exciting frequency and also contains a phase angle phase lag parameter so we found that steady state response steady state response is equal to some uh, magnitude say x not equal to sine here driving frequency is same omega i t plus theta i theta i is the phase angle so that we have seen and uh, you can see that uh, omega i x not is the amplitude of this vibration that is uh, found as this 2p m l and omega i square okay then here if i expand it sin omega i t cos theta i plus sin theta i into cos omega i t so sin omega it into cos theta i plus sin theta i into cos omega it now we have found that phase angle in our earlier classes tan theta i equal to uh, 2i j i omega i divided by 1 minus si square instead of j i omega i it will be the frequency ratio that is si okay so now you can see that if tan theta is this that means uh, you can see this if tan theta is this then sin theta i can be written as 2i j i si divided by root over 1 minus si square whole square plus 2i j i si whole square and cos theta i is written as 1 minus si square divided by 1 minus si square whole square plus twice j i si whole square so you can see now this term is coming here that is sin theta is here and uh, this cos theta i is here okay so we got this uh, expression for the generalized coordinate and then task will be to find ai and bi for the time dependent response of the generalized coordinates after finding this eta it completely from the given initial condition because ai bi will be found depending on the initial condition and then we can find the total response as y x i t equal to phi 1 x 1 eta 1 t plus phi 2 x 2 eta 2 t like that and you can see for simply supported beam the contribution of the second mode will be zero because of this uh, you can see this even modes are unsymmet unsymmetrical and when we are interested to mid span quantities you will find that 
the even number of modes will not contribute anything because a node exists at the center of the beam. Okay. Let us assume that damping is small. With the assumption of small damping, we can now write eta i t equal to a i cos omega i t plus b i sin omega i t that is the homogeneous part plus 2 p divided by m omega i square omega i square that is omega i only this is i at natural frequency omega i square l into 1 minus s i square and then sin omega i t is the contribution of the diving frequency. So that is what is steady state part and this is the homogeneous part. Now to apply the initial condition we must take the derivative of this uh, displacement. So displacement expression is written as the using the model superposition technique as a i cos omega i t plus b i sin omega i t plus 2 p divided by m omega i square into l divided by 1 minus s i square then sin omega i t s i is the frequency ratio s i is nothing but capital omega i divided by small omega i. So that is what is frequency ratio. You know that at uh, for undamped system when the frequency ratio is high uh, frequency ratio is 1 approximately and then amplitude your amplitude at si is equal to 1 goes infinite unbounded. So that is the characteristic of this frequency response curve and this what is that condition is the resonant point, resonance condition. Okay. Now here taking the double uh, single derivative we can find the velocity of the velocity of the beam. So y dot x t equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity bracket a i omega i sin omega i t plus b i omega i cos omega i t plus 2 p and after dif differentiation omega will come here cos omega i t divided by m omega i square l 1 minus s i square and then multiplied by sin i pi x okay so we get this now we apply the initial condition for example the initially the beam is at rest so displacement and uh, velocity at t is equal to 0 is 0 so y x 0 is 0 and y dot x 0 equal to 0 so based on that we now get 0 equal to say this is 0 and then this term we will get here summation ai and then uh, here actually you see that uh, this term again will be 0 because sin 0 is 0 multiplied by sin i pi x by l. So from that condition it is obvious that ai is 0. Now substituting the velocity condition at t is equal to 0 we get now b i omega i plus 2 p omega i divided by m omega i square l into 1 minus s i square multiplied by sin i pi x by l and this is after putting t is equal to 0 and therefore this also represents a zero velocity condition. Now we have to extract this b i. So that can be done. Suppose if I multiply both sides by sin j pi x by l and use the orthogonality condition, uh, orthogonality property of the sine function that we will be able to get only the terms containing b i and other terms will be 0. So therefore, 
we get this b i from this expression say this is the velocity expression at t is equal to 0 multiplying both sides of the equation by sine j pi x by l then integrating this expression from 0 to l and using the orthogonality property of the mode shape function now finally we get b i equal to minus 2 p omega i divided by m omega i cube l into 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus s i square. So that is the constant b i whereas the other constant a i is found as 0, a i is 0. So two constants of integration are now found out. So now we can write the complete expression. So knowing these two constant, now I write the full expression eta i t, it will be becoming this, this is what is your uh, the constant term b i. So minus 2 p omega i divided by m omega i square into l into 1 divided by 1 minus s i square into sin omega i t plus 2 p sin omega i t divided by m omega i square l into 1 minus s i square bracket closed. Now for simply supported beam we know that the ith natural frequency square is nothing but i to the power 4 pi to the power 4 e i divided by m l to the power 4. So this is the square of the natural frequency. So after substituting this omega i square because omega i square is common in both the terms so i take omega i square common and m m and l is also common so i take this common term and 2p omega i is also common in both the uh, here it is not there so 2p omega i i have taken common so therefore i write here that uh, the term as sin omega i t minus s i sin omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square. This is coming because when I take omega i square common then omega i remains there and uh, the ratio capital omega i by small omega i is nothing but s i. So s i is remaining here with the sign term. Now here you can see this is the contribution of contribution of moving load moving load with velocity with velocity b whereas this term is the free vibration free vibration contribution. So you are getting eta i t composed of this moving load term that is due to uh, containing its velocity that is influencing the driving frequency and S i is the, the frequency ratio so here it is appearing and 1 minus S i square term is there. Now substituting omega i square as i to the power 4 pi to the power 4 e i divided by m l to the power 4 here we now get eta i t equal to 2 p l cube divided by i to the power 4 pi to the power 4 e i bracket sin omega i t minus s i t sin omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square. So this is the expression for eta i t uh, that is the generalized coordinate in the ith mode. Now the complete response will be found as summation of the generalized coordinate multiplied by the mode shape function. So here we are getting y x t equal to 2 p l cube divided by pi to the power 4 e i, e i is a constant here then summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i to the power 4 bracket sin omega i t minus s i sin omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square into sin i pi x by l. So if I see this expression 
then you can see the fourth power of mode number appears in the denominator. So obviously it indicates that as you go in the higher modes the natural frequency will be higher and the mode number is higher so its higher power will be more. So generally the magnitude of the deflection will decrease in the higher mode. And you can also see that when the x is equal to L by 2 that is at the mid span then we are getting I pi by 2 ok. The mid span deflection is the maximum deflection and for I is equal to 1 you will get sin pi by 2 but I is equal to 2 you will get sin pi. I is equal to 3 again you will get sin 3 pi by 2 i is equal to 4 you will get sin 2 pi. So all even number of modes will not contribute anything to the response. Now carrying out the differentiation with respect to x of the deflection function now we arrive at the expression of the bending moment. So bending moment expression is given by mxt equal to minus ei del square y by del x square equal to say after second differentiation this i square pi square l square term will come and therefore this power will be reduced. So now it is i square and pi power will also be reduced so pi square. So 2 pl divided by pi square into summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i square into sin omega i t minus si sin small omega i t divided by 1 minus si square into sin i pi x by l. Okay. Shear force can be found from this expression minus ei del cube y by del x cube because it is all the space derivative del x cube. So therefore you are getting shear force as uh, this 2 p by pi summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i into sin omega i t minus s i sin small omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square into cos i pi x by l. You can see that cosine term is coming in the shear force expression whereas deflection and this bending moment contains sine term because shear force is odd derivative terms so therefore the odd derivative of sine function will uh, result in a cosine function therefore cos term is coming. And uh, you can see that maximum bending moment and maximum deflection will be produced at x is equal to L by 2 that is at the mid span whereas from this expression it is clear that maximum shear force will be produced either at x is equal to 0 or x is equal to L that is the N support. So at the support shear force is maximum because of maximum reaction. Okay. So mid-span deflection we have found after putting x is equal to L by 2 and this expression is y L by 2 t equal to 2 p L cube divided by pi to the power 4 ei summation i is equal to 1 to infinity. 1 by i to the power 4 into sin omega i t minus si, si is the frequency ratio into sin omega i t small omega i t divided by 1 minus si square into sin i pi by 2. Mid span bending moment similarly can be written 2 p l divided by pi square summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i square into sin omega i t minus s1 si sin omega i t divided by 1 minus si square and sin i pi by 2. Sharing force similarly can be written as the third derivative of the deflection with respect to uh, uh, space uh, this is x. So shear derivative is with respect to x and therefore shear force at x is equal to 0 is found as because we have substituted x is equal to 0 in the cosine function. So cos 0 is 1 so therefore no trigonometrical function is coming here. 
so therefore we are writing the shear force at the left hand support is 2 p by pi summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i second bracket sin omega i t minus s i sin small omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square you can see here the derivative process the deflection you see that i to the power 4 term is there in the denominator that is deflection is inversely proportional to the i to the power 4 whereas the bending moment is inversely proportional to the i square and shear force is inversely proportional to the i although the magnitudes of the all the response quantities that is deflection, bending moment and shear force, shear force reduces with the increase of number of modes but reduction is more prominent in case of deflection because of existence of fourth power of this mode number and it is less in this um, mid span bending moment and uh, also less in the shearing force at Sharing force denominator contains only the mode number. There is no higher power associated with this. Okay. Now let us illustrate this procedure with the example of simply supported beam. The length of the beam is taken as 20 meter. Mass per unit length is 300 kg meter. Flexural rigidity EI is 10 to the power 7 Newton meter square. And the moving load magnitude is 6 kN. Let us consider first mode only, so i is equal to 1 and speed let us consider 100 km per hour and which is after converting to meter per second, it is becoming 27.8 meter per second. That means conversion factor from kilometer per hour to meter per second is 0.278. So mid span deflection is y l by 2 t that is the position equal to 2 p l cube divided by pi to the power 4 e i bracket close sin omega i t minus s i sin omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square. Let us first find the first natural frequency. So omega 1 is equal to pi square root over e i divided by m l to the power 4 equal to pi square into root over 10 to the power 7 divided by 300 into 20 to the power 4. 20 is the length of the beam and the first natural frequency is coming out as 4.504 radian per meter per second. It is the temporal frequency so the unit is radian per second. Okay. Now since the load reaches the mid span at time t is equal to L by 2 V. So, the time taken by the moving load to reach the mid span is 0.36 second considering the uniform velocity of 27.8 meter per second. And uh, omega 1 that is the driving frequency in the first mode is pi into V by L. So, it is found as 4.37 uh, radian per second radian per second and the frequency ratio is 0 0.97 as it it is shown here 4.37 divided by 4.504 is nothing but 0 0.97. So after finding this uh, parameter now we apply this in this expression. So deflection is coming as 2 into 6000 Newton is the load into 20 cube. So all force unit is taken in Newton and the linear distance is taken in meter. So 20 cube divided by pi to the power 4 into 10 to the power 7 is the modulus of elasticity. It is unit is Newton meter square into sin 4.37 into 0.36 minus 0.31 is the frequency uh, ratio into sin frequency ratio that we have found is 0.97 so here it is 0.97 here it is 
so 0.97 into sin 4.504 into 0.36 here sin 4.37 into 0.36 all are in radian and then 0.97 into sin 4.37 into 0.36 so deflection at the mid span is 0 0.0521 meter similarly bending moment is found as at the mid span 0.5 l and time is there is 0.36 second so it is 2 pl by pi square sin omega it minus si sin omega it divided by 1 minus si square so this value is put 2 p 2 into 6000 into 20 divided by pi square into sin 4.37 into 0.36 minus 0.97 into sin 4.504 what is 4.504 it is the first natural frequency into time to reach the uh, mid span is 0 0.36 divided by 1 minus si square there is 1 minus 0.97 square and the value of bending moment at the mid span is 1451 newton meter okay now let us define the impact factor impact factor is very important parameter and it gives the magnifying effect of this dynamically imposed load. So where in this expression Rdx is the dynamic response at this section, Rsx is the static deflection or static response. It may be deflection or it may be bending moment shear. So better to write it response. Response may be containing your deflection, bending moment, shear force, etc at this section. So impact factor is used in design of bridges to take account of the dynamic effect of the moving load. And impact factor is always positive value. So therefore we have taken the absolute value of this ratio Rdx minus Rsx divided by Rsx. So it can be written as like that Rdx divided by Rsx minus 1 okay so mid span deflection impact factor for simply supported beam maximum deflection at the mid span is delta equal to pl cube divided by 48 ei so we are getting this id equal to 96 by pi to the power 4 summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i to the power 4 sin omega it minus asi sin omega it divided by 1 minus si square into sin i pi by 2 minus 1. You can see here in this impact factor, the magnitude of the moving load is not coming here, not appearing. So it is cancelled because of the ratio that we have taken Rdx by Rs minus 1. So therefore this P gets cancelled. And you can note that 96 by pi to the power 4 is approximately 1. So therefore we can write id equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i to the power 4 sin omega it minus asi sin omega it divided by 1 minus si square sin i pi by 2 minus 1. Impact factor for bending moment. Similarly bending moment impact factor is found considering the maximum static bending moment at the mid span for moving load concentrated load p as pl by 4 then the ratio of the uh, dynamic bending moment to the static bending moment becomes this 8 by pi square summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i square bracket sin omega it minus si sin omega it divided by 1 minus si square into sin i pi by 2 minus 1 impact factor for shearing force uh, shearing force may occur at the left support or right support maximum value so therefore maximum shear force is obtained at the support when the load is at the support so therefore dividing this shear force expression by p we now get this impact factor as at the left support it is impact factor for shear force iv equal to 2 by pi summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i 
sin omega i t minus s i sin small omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square minus 1. Okay. Now let us illustrate this with an example. So we take again the same length of the beam that we have taken an earlier example and uh, if the length of the beam is 20 meter, mass per unit length is 300 kg per meter, flexural rigidity EI is 10 to the power 7 and P is the load, moving load is 6 kN per meter, 6 kN, it is a concentrated load and uh, your this our mode we have taken only first mode because we will uh, see this uh, response uh, the only with the first mode. However, the number of modes can be taken into computation and we vary the speed from 10 km per hour to 140 km per hour. The highest speed of the moving load is taken 140 km per hour and the lowest speed here is 10 km per hour. So we calculate the value of impact factor first let us discuss the impact factor for the maximum deflection at the mid span. So its value is sin omega i t minus s i sin small omega i t divided by 1 minus s i square minus 1. You can see impact factor here it is a non-linear function because of existence of sin function. So let us see how the speed of the moving load influences the impact factor. Other parameter that can influence the impact factor is the length of the beam, then mass of the beam, flexural rigidity of the beam. But we are now investigating here only the influence of the speed of the moving vehicle. So V is varying from 10 to 140 and it is tabulated here in the first column. You can see omega 1 that is the driving frequency in the first mode is pi v by l. So its value is calculated uh, here and we are writing here for the 10 km per hour speed it is becoming 0.437. As the speed increases you can see that driving frequency is also increases and at the highest speed consider 140 km per hour the frequency of excitation is 6.116 radian per second. Then Tm that is the time taken by the moving load to reach the mid span is L by 2b and its value is 3.597, 1.798. Like that we are calculating at each speed. Corresponding to each speed we are calculating the time to reach the mid span. You can see from the table in the third column that as the speed increases the time also decreases because in that case moving load reaches the mid span earlier. So S1 is the frequency ratio that is omega 1 by uh, small, capital omega 1 by small omega 1. And after finding all this parameter now we substitute here and we calculate ID as that is the impact factor for deflection at the mid span against the speed of the moving load that varies from 10 to 140 km per hour at an interval of 10 km per hour that is obvious in this table from the first column and the corresponding impact factor are calculated and shown here in the first column. You can see here as you increase the speed the impact factor goes on increasing but after certain speed of 40 km per hour we are finding the decrease in the impact factor. We are finding the decrease in the impact factor and it goes up to man, below as 0 0.07 and th then again it rises, rises continuously rises and uh, it is the maximum value that is obtained at the speed of 140 is 0 0.711. The graphical representation of the impact factor versus speed is shown here. You can see the impact factor first gradually rises and up to 40 km per hour it shows a, a trend that is rising trend. After that it shows a decreasing trend and somewhere in the speed of 70 km per hour it shows the lowest value. After that it goes on increasing okay, with speed. The limit that we have considered is 10 to 
140 km per hour. So similarly, we have obtained the mid-span bending moment. Uh, the expression for bending moment for the first mode is 8 by pi square into sine omega 1t minus s1 small omega 1t divided by 1 minus s1 square minus 1. So after substituting the value of this quantity that we have earlier obtained, uh, the mid span bending moment now can be calculated and it is plotted. The plot shows that at the from initial velocity 10 km per hour to 20 km per hour that is it is increasing uh, impact factor is increasing then it is decreasing then again it is increasing that means it shows a oscillatory pattern here and after that that is after 60 km per hour speed the impact factor for bending moment increases monotonically so the increase is seen here is dominant here now the impact factor for shear force at the support is also plotted and here a trend is reverse that means uh, the shear force shows a decreasing trend with the increase in velocity and after 100 km per hour at a very high speed it shows somewhere incre increased value but not much but initially at the 40 km uh, per hour speed the impact factor shear force is the highest and then it gradually decreases for the example taken here okay for other example this uh, the train may be different okay now let us go to the second item that is beam with support excitation there are various problems for example a long tower or a long tall chimney tall tower or a tall chimney even a very tall building can be considered as a uh, cantilever structure just like a idealized as a cantilever structure so here we can see due to support excitation there is no force so that can be taken as the earthquake event so during earthquake event actually no force is applied but the ground moves due to movement of the ground the force is induced in the different levels so let us see how the force is induced so here say one end, end of the beam is supported and it is given an excitation that is a displacement it is support is displacing with time t so total displacement is now support displacement plus the displacement of the beam so y x t is the elastic deflection of the beam and y not t is the support deflection so total deflection is y t x t now relative deflection of the beam that is important for the generation of the stress and strain is y x t that can be found from the total absolute displacement y t x t minus y not t so substituting this value in the equation of motion the equation of motion that we consider now is a undamped system for example and we are considering this is the equation of motion this is the equation of motion for the undamped system other force term can also be taken but let us uh, illustrate this with the undamped system so substituting this you can see this y not t term does not contain s x the space parameter so its differentiation with respect to x will be zero so therefore here we are getting ei del to the power 4 y by del x 4 plus m del square y by del t square equal to say here here we are transferring this thing the m minus m d square y naught divided by dt square so that is what is the force induced induced force due to support displacement support movement 
So no force is applied here basically but here you are seeing a forcing term is coming here because of time differentiation of y naught will give a time dependent force ok. So uh, the mode superposition technique can be applied here to decouple the equation of motion and where here we are getting eta i double dot plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t i varies from 1 to up to infinity. So q i t is equal to f t integration 0 to l f i into x dx divided by m 0 to l integration f i phi square phi i square x dx in which f t is equal to this is the time dependent part is minus m d square y naught by dt square. So here this integral, this integral in many textbook it is tabulated this ratio. So therefore we can solve the problem if we write this the generalized force in the terms of the known integral. So this integral we are telling at the ith mode it is or the ith mode it is capital I i in the kth mode it is i k. So we are getting that eta double dot k plus omega k square into eta k t plus f t by m i k. So again the solution technique is similar. We can get this uh, homogeneous part as well as particular integral. So homogeneous part is this in the kth mode the eta k t equal to a k cos omega k t plus b k into sin omega k t plus i k this integral we have to use it now and m i k is nothing but this integral phi k x dx and phi k square x dx both are evaluated with the limit 0 to l. So this is homogeneous part. And the particular integral is now calculated using the Duhamel's integral. So Duhamel integral is written as this integration 0 to t is t minus tau plus f tau d tau. Now what is h t? h t is impulse response function. For the ith mode, for the ith mode we have the impulse response function as h i t equal to 1 upon small m i omega i square capital M i omega i square capital M i is the generalized mass in the ith mode sin omega i t in absence of damping. So this is the impulse response function and that can be used with the forcing function that we calculate now as forcing function as here minus m d square y naught by dt square and other terms are as usual it will be there. So we now calculating this integral for any type of excitation in the base we now evaluate this eta k t and after knowing eta k t we can find the total response y t y t represents the total response of the beam subjected to support excitation is equal to y naught t plus summation k is equal to 1 to n into phi k x eta k t ok. So relative displacement that is we are interested is this part. So this part will produce the bending moment because here being y naught t being a time function 
will give zero contribution to the derivative process. So therefore, bending moment that we are interested in the beam is will be mainly contributed from this part. So this is Mx and also similarly the base shear that is important for earthquake response is nothing but Ei del cube yt by del x cube. You can see in this expression there is yt contains two terms y0 and the relative displacement that is phi kx into eta kt. However, y0 t terms has no contribution to the bending moment and shear force. Okay. So, let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, first we discussed about the method of obtaining dynamic response of a Euler Bernoulli beam subjected to moving load. The practical application of such dynamic analysis was discussed with impact factor. The impact factor is simply a positive multiplier you have seen that is used to magnify the static live load stresses in bridge design. The effect of speed of the moving load on the impact factor was discussed with the help of numerical examples. We also discussed the analysis of a beam subjected to support excitation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.